Pass. A leave is not granted, Madam Speaker. Leave is not granted. I call the honourable the leader of the opposition. What a surprise from a chicken-hearted government! I move that so much of standing and sessional orders be suspended as would prevent the Leader of the Opposition from moving the following motion forthwith. That this House condemns the Prime Minister for, one, leading a chaotic and incompetent government which seeks to a slug Australian students with $100,000 degrees, b rip $80 a week from pensioners, c rip $6,000 from the budget of a typical Australian family, and two, putting Australia's AAA credit rating at risk through his own incompetence and mismanagement, and three, having no economic plan for Australia's future. Tony Abbott is the captain chaos of Australian politics. He is the captain of a team who has no economic plan for Australia's future. They have no budget plan. It has been 39 days since 39 Liberal MPs voted to get rid of this Prime Minister. Yet I've heard in the PMO bunker they look back on that as the golden age of this government. This government has no adoptable economic strategy. This is why standing orders should be suspended. Listen to the government say they want to talk about everyone else's plan. Where's the government's plan? This government is running the classic defence. Don't look at us, look everywhere else. Let's have a look at the plan which they say that they want to maintain. They want to put forward $100,000 degrees for Australian university students, and it has failed in the budget. It has failed when it's gone to the Senate, and it will keep failing whenever you call your election. The real issue why we should be standing, suspending standing orders here is that Australians have had a deep concern that they couldn't trust Tony Abbott. They've deep down wondered, can they trust Tony Abbott? Many of us have thought you can't. But what has been revealed in recent days in the idea of this government's misfortune is this government has now junked even any pretense of a surplus. I love hearing these people talk about surplus. In 2012, Tony Abbott said, or the Prime Minister, the current Prime Minister, I should call him, he said in 2012, an incoming Liberal and Coalition government, that they will bring to surplus in their first year. Remember that promise? Then they said, then we've seen the old Liberals slip and slide, and they've said, well, we'll do it in the first three years. But the slide isn't finished here. This is one of the big slides like you see at the show. They then said, Tony Abbott has made many contributions to the English language, has invented broad balance. Let me decode what the broad balance budget within five years will be. It is not a surplus. And then Treasury let the cat out of the bag yesterday. This honest Treasury official, on the way through disowning that piece of propaganda called the Intergenerational Report, they said there would be no surplus for 40 years. No surplus for 40 years. Australians have heard that right. The Treasury has said that this government cannot generate a surplus for 40 years. And what we've seen, and the reason why we've seen this, is this so-called brave heart of Australian politics, this, this crusading Prime Minister. Many of us have had doubts about can we trust him, but one thing he's always had is his mantra, as his holy grail, as the, as the item that he politically genuflects before he, he's always said surplus. Yet what we've seen is a slip and slide and a slip and slide away. And why? Because he wants to save his own job. There is only one policy of this government, save Tony Abbott's job. There is only one budget strategy, save Tony Abbott's job. Now the Prime Minister says, Oh, it'll be a dull budget. You know, it's going to be something good for families, something good for childcare. It'll be dull. One thing about this Prime Minister is he's never dull. He is never dull. But what he has done is he's given up his commitment to ever getting to surplus. This was a core belief. This was, we know that Tony Abbott has trouble keeping his election promises, but at least on surplus, we mightn't have liked the way he would get to it, but what he does is that's what he's always pushed. The astounding, but what I have to say to be fair to Tony Abbott here, what to be fair to this Prime Minister here, is this is not a captain's pick 
to dump everything they believe or to try and just save their job. It's a team vote. It's a team vote. See, this government leak on each other about whose idea it was to knight Prince Philip, but when it comes to leaking on each other who opposed the bad ideas in this budget, unusually for this ragtag mock, radio silence. Because no one anywhere can seriously say they ever disagree with each other on any of it. The $100,000 degrees, the cuts to families, payments and, of course, the pensions. The thing about this government is, at their heart, they don't believe it's the unfairness of the budget which is the problem. They just blame the salesman. Let me tell you, you've got half the answer. You do have a problem with your salesman, but it's more than just who's selling it. It's the unfairness you're selling. And what we see is that this so-called economic you know, first officer of the nation, I'm referring to the Treasurer in case anyone was confused about it, <laughs> who I was referring to, they have got two months, less than two months to go for their budget, and they are adrift. What the government often says is that it's just gossip, the inside talk about the problems they've got. Treasury officials have made it clear. It is five minutes to midnight, less than two months before this budget, and there is no budget plan. There is no budget plan. But standing orders should be suspended because it's. Well, there's the agriculture minister. You've done enough this week, son. <laughs> then we've got standing orders should be suspended. Standing orders should be suspended because we've got an education minister. He is not a fixer, he is a failure. Arguably the worst higher education minister that we've ever seen since we had higher education in this country. $100,000 degrees. What a stupid idea. $2 billion from vocational education, skills and training. And of course the vandalism that they are committing to Australia's schools by cutting $30 billion from schools over the next 10 years is a disgrace. But standing, officers sh standing orders should be suspended as well because the health ministers have no plan for health. What mind would have dreamed up a GP tax on the sick and the vulnerable? $50 billion from Australia's hospitals. And that's an important point to remember. This government's last budget, which none of the would-be's, could-be's or never were's opposite, have not repudiated, is a $50 billion cut to our hospitals. The damage that this government is doing to Australia with their lack of an economic plan to our hospitals is absolutely appalling. The real problem here is that this government, unlike predecessor governments of Liberal or Labor persuasion, have no adoptable strategy. They cannot convince the Senate. They act as if having a Senate not of their own political persuasion is a new phenomenon. For many years in Australian history, there has been a Senate of a different political complexion to a government. But this is the first time we have had a government who has not got an adoptable economic plan. Australia has no budgetary plan because this government has no budgetary plan, which Australians want. So, Prime Minister, the man who loves to get up and say one thing, then apologise, I'm really sorry, then do it again and apologise again, as if life is one huge, I make a mistake, I'm a fool, and then I repent. This is not good enough, your budgetary policies. Your $6,000 cuts for families are just a bad idea. Your $100,000 degrees are just a broken promise. Your cuts to pensions are an outrage. And your cuts to hospitals and schools, $80 billion worth in the next 10 years, is absolute economic vandalism. So if you want to take these rotten ideas to an election, please do it. Give the Australian people an opportunity to have a say on your policies rather than trying to intimidate the Senate with your broken promises. And I also advise the Prime Minister, it doesn't matter when you bring the election, the battle lines are most certainly drawn. And you love to talk about Liberal can do this and Liberal can do that. You haven't done very much in the last 18 months. You have taken 18 months of the nation's life and wasted the time of the nation. We believe in universal health care versus your GP cuts and your GP tax and your health care cuts. We believe in access to higher education for all, not $100,000 degrees. We do not share the narrow-based extremist philosophy of the education minister who says that people who haven't been to university begrudge paying taxes for those who have. I've never met a parent or a grandparent who begrudged it. This is a government with no economic plan and you most certainly do stand condemned.